What's going on, Thorn Army? Joe here, and today we're gonna to be doing a custom stringing for John Rannigan. He uh, actually just became an NLL champion, and now is heading over to the MLL with the Rochester Rattlers, and uh, he needs a field stick. He is a Maverick athlete, and he loves the tactics, so we're hooking him up with a fresh white one. Um, he currently uses fiber, so we're also gonna go diamond for the fiber, and all white stringing as well, keeping it kind of classy for him, and I think we might zazz it up a little bit later with some instinct that I've been holding on for him or something else. Uh, so first up, he is kind of a true left to right dodger, kind of switches and just shoots and then sometimes likes to bull dodge some dudes, which I love when he does. So his biggest thing is a lot of hold in his stick. He doesn't want the ball to kind of shift around at all. And he needs a lot of power um, when he's trying to bring his arms all the way around, depending on which way he's going down the field. So we're gonna hook him up with that. And uh, first up, it's gonna be a nine diamond top string. And we're gonna do it in our traditional way. If you guys don't know how to do this, hit the eye in the top right hand corner. And we also have a link in the description below. And uh, let's get started. So there's our perfect top string. Heading onto the sidewalls for John, I like to use um, a little bit of different kind of sidewall pattern. Normally you put on a tactic, the top string in the second hole. Um, but for John, I, I kind of like to push it up a little bit and then expand the channel just a little bit longer. I find um, with a guy of his size and kind of what he's looking for on the field, I'm able to give him that same amount of hold, uh, but with a little bit more of an adaptable release because of how long his arms are, he can generate a little bit more power uh, without the stick having too much of a catch point in it for him. So we're gonna move that up. And then instead of skipping one hole and then two, we're gonna do two, then two, and then lock it down. Um, I'll show you when we get there. Also, since we're pushing the top string up tighter, it's gonna have more slack kind of in this first curve of the head. So I like to double up the sidewall. So just loop it around twice um, instead of just once. And that just gives you kind of a better anchor on the side and it'll prevent from this stretching a little bit, uh, making the stick have a little bit more lip than you want it to. So you can see now it's really defined there with those two doubles. And then we're gonna put just a one in there giving a little bit more slack, not making it overly defined, and just locking it down nice and tight. That's gonna give it a kind of this really nice kind of straight channeling effect where the ball is able to kind of just like sling out of the head more so than throw. Um, it's kind of something we started doing with karate sticks because again, he's got a huge wingspan as well. Uh, and it lets guys have a little bit more hold in their stick um, and still have that really nice clean release with a lot of power behind it. Now that we have that one, we're just gonna lock all the way down the rest of the head to give it that nice defined kind of mid, mid high. As usual, we're gonna use 10 diamonds for the side. Just this last one, we're not gonna lock it down. Since the pocket's kind of so locked down and it's got that nice definition to it, I usually like to leave the, the bottom just a little bit loose, making the catch a little bit soft. And then also if you really need to, um, the ball can drop down just a little bit, giving you a little bit more hold. So for that, we're just really gonna come in from the back and then tie it off with a knot. Nothing fancy. And just right before we tie it, just give a little pull, a little bit of slack to it and lock it down. As you can see, it's a nice channel, one side down. We're gonna trim this and head over to the other one. With the sides finished, we're just gonna do kind of our standard throat and we're just gonna weave it through the nine and then skip the center diamond so it's even. Uh, this just is the best for letting the ball kind of sit a little bit low, cushioning the ball a little bit, but still keeping it nice and defined towards the top. Uh, it's definitely my favorite way to do throat. And I like to string the throat all the way through, pull it nice and tight, and then pound the pocket until I kind of like where it's sitting, and then just pull it a little bit tighter and tie a knot, and then give it a good pound. It should end up being pretty perfect. Next up, we have the shooters. We're gonna do one straight and two use, and we're gonna do a five and a three, which is gonna give them the most amount of hold for least amount of whip, because we kind of got that whip really built into the pocket itself. We don't really need to add any more, and we just wanna have it to have nice retention and a good release. So we're actually gonna drop it down a diamond to give us a five and a three. So they're all gonna go on the nine diamond rows. First up, nylon, straight, going across. And for this, like all nylons from us, we're just gonna tie it off around the sidewall, make it nice and tight, not too tight, giving you the nice consistent release when everything breaks in. 
And uh, for the shooters, we're gonna do something a little bit different, and I'll explain why. Now for the shooters, when we're doing you, especially in uh, a pocket like this, we like to stretch them out as much as we can and kind of get rid of any of that extra hold that they have in them, because they don't really need it along with the head. And then also since we lock this down so tight on the sides to get that nice definition, we're actually gonna go around the plastic instead of um, inside between the, the plastic and the string itself, just because it's gonna be really hard to do and eventually it's just gonna kind of stretch out that one spot. So just go around the plastic and we're gonna do a five and a three diamond um, and putting them both on the right side, just the way I like it. Remember when you're doing shooters, take your time, make sure they lay perfectly flat. It's gonna give you the best release. And uh, if they're not flat, when you start playing with it, the ball's gonna make them bunch up and then you're gonna have an inconsistent stick. So take your time, make sure they lay flat. And they should come out absolutely gorgeous. Again, we're gonna stretch it. And this time we're gonna do a three diamond in the next nine diamond row. So we're gonna go down a row and measure out. Now, since we stretched them out earlier, uh, when they're both in, I like to go ahead and kind of tighten them as much as I think they can go because that'll give us the least amount of resistance on them until a certain point. Um, if they're too loose, if they can get caught up, they're just kind of weird. And since we stretched them, you kind of got rid of that elasticity in them. So I'd like to kind of just make them as tight as I can without it really grabbing, I would say, um, onto the, the ball itself. And that's gonna give you the, just the, the best of both worlds that hold without that ridiculous amount of width. And again, this is more so by feel and doing a bunch of sticks You start to learn this. The most important thing to do is to always test it out. So string it up to what you think and go throw with it. Right there feels really good. The nylon might be a little tight, so I'm gonna take that out just a little bit. I'm just gonna clean it up, make everything all the same length and put nice clean tips on everything so it looks perfect. As you can see, absolutely perfect. It's got that beautiful mid, mid high, the gorgeous channel to it and the two U's with kind of that harder nylon. The ball's gonna sit like a rock in the top of this stick. Uh, have huge power generation for him with a little bit whip, not too much. Um, again, he's a little bit bigger so you can get away with having um, a bit more whip in his stick. Um, I kind of think this pocket is really, really nice in the tactic, even though it's more meant for kind of a lower pocket. Uh, because it doesn't have that big of return, you can kind of get away with over channeling it because um, the ball doesn't have to travel as far. And it just gives you a ridiculous amount of hold and ball security um, without making your stick kind of too inconsistent with that extra whip added to it. Um, overall, I think this is gonna be absolutely perfect for John. I can't wait to see him uh, tear it up this season in the MLL. As always, let me know what you think about the head in the comments below. If you learned something, please throw the video a like and be sure to subscribe to Throw on the Cross to not miss the next video. As always, I will put a uh, close up and some more image of this up on our Instagram. So definitely check that out at Throne of Strength. It's everything. Hope you enjoy it and I'll see you on the field.